There we go. Okay. Probably, I probably don't need it to be so loud either. Like I'm trying to yell to the camera. Don't yell to the camera. Okay. Hey, Jeff Love here from Alternative Heating and Supplies. I get a lot of questions on how to mount a pump to a wood boiler. There's a lot of parts to this question, so I'm gonna kind of break them down here and go through them piece by piece. The first one is where to mount the pump on the wood boiler. Should I do it inside the house or should I do it outside on the wood boiler? The right answer is, or the preferable way of it, is at the wood boiler. Now, the house is a good option only if you need a second pump because your distance from the wood boiler to the house is so long. But nine out of 10 people that I mount the pump on the boiler with the right size pump can get it to the house and back to the wood boiler with no problem at all. The only houses that we do have that problem and I do recommend is say set up one pump if you're having a hard time heating, add a second pump later, which is usually a, a quick fix. So the reason why you wanna install it at the boiler is the pump stays cool. These pumps are air cooled and they have usually fins on them. So they run better, cooler, and more efficient when they're cooler. Also, they don't make any noise outside and the noise will not travel inside your house. These are big motors and if it's mounted inside your house, these are usually mounted to a wall, which then the sound will vibrate up through the house. And if there's any ladies in the house, you're gonna know about it because they're gonna tell you that pump is driving them crazy because of the humming sound they make. That is one of the main reasons you do not wanna stall that inside your house. And it will go through the whole house. It's a big motor. So as I said, only the second pump if needed. Most of the time, 90% of the time, I size the pump so you'll never need it. That's up to 300 feet away, long way away. What port to mount it? So most boilers have a high and a low port on the back of it. So excuse the picture here, but it's a cutout of the back of the boiler with a high port and a low port. Now there is actually manufacturers out there that say mount it on the high port. They are wrong. And I'll explain that to you now. You mount it on the lower port. The reason why you want to mount it on the lower port, if you can kind of zoom into this picture here, this is kind of a cutaway of a wood boiler. And some wood boilers are square, sometimes they're rectangles. In this case, I just drew around a barrel and a barrel design is what it's commonly called. But the concepts are all the same. It's irrelevant what the shapes are. But inside there's a round burn box, which is a, where the heat and the fire and everything go. And around that is a water jacket, which is another barrel in this case. And the two ports are identified here, low and high, high port, low port. And there is some manufacturers that will tell you, the guys who make these boilers, to put the pumps on the high port. They are wrong. And I will be glad to talk to them if they would like to have this conversation with me. Or maybe they'll just watch this video and change their way. But the reason why you do not want it on the high port you mount the, if you mount the pump at the high port and send it to the house, first of all, everybody thinks, well, oh, the hottest water is at the top above the burn chamber. It's absolutely correct, it is. But we don't want the hottest water. We want to return the water to the highest point so the water gets pushed around, which mixes the boiler better, and it's gonna pull the heat across the hot barrel, which is gonna bring the heat down and mix it all up real good. So the if you kept it here and the hot water would just come up to one side and you would be boiling the boiler. So the concept is, is you want to return the water on the hot side so it pulls the water down around the hot barrel to get that good heat exchange, that good recovery rate, and a faster ability for the water to be heated up and sent back into the house. The other problem is, is you're gonna get a, what I call a tornado. Most of you guys seen this in your draining of a, a bathtub with your kids. And you'll, the, the tub will be 12 to 18 inches deep and you'll drain it and you'll see this tornado start sucking air. The same thing can happen inside of a boiler, especially when you have a pump pulling on it, which will make the pump cavitate. Now, you probably already heard this or seen this many times, which is really bad for a pump, makes it overheat and blows them. Blowing pumps is a big problem here. So you don't want that, okay? The other thing about a pump is pumps like to have pressure on both sides. So if you're pushing something, you're gonna be able to push it further and harder if you have someone pushing on your back. So a pump pushes water, and if water's pushing on it, it's gonna give you a better push, okay? So having it at a lower port, you have one atmospheric pressure of all that water pushing down on the pump, which is now pushing towards your house. That's how simple this is. So that's why you wanna mount it on your lower port. The other things is if you pulled it from the top, 
it doesn't mix very well. So the hottest part of the burn chamber is at the top and the hardest part of the stove is from the top. And that's going to boil and you'll get boiling, but no water will boil under here because there's not enough heat. So again, that's why you want it all mixed up. And that's the reason why you mount it on the lower port. All right, so now we're going to go into how to mount the pump. Another thing that I get a lot of uh, questions on, or can I do this, or what can I do, because they don't have enough room on the back of the boiler. The basic rules, okay, is when you mount the pump, the pump motor needs to be horizontal to the floor at all times. Turning it this way, the electrical box can only be 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock, or 3 o'clock. You cannot mount it with the motor down, and you cannot mount it with the motor up, okay? So find a way to mount it. I know there's limited room on the back of these boilers, but you've got to find it, okay? Real quick, motor horizontal to ground, electrical box 12, nine or three, nothing else, okay? I hope that helped with that. Now, going into, um, and I pointed it out here, so if you need to refer back to it, setting up a bleed system in a boiler. A lot of people call me and say, hey, I'm not getting any heat to the house. Now, the reason why you're not getting any heat to the house and the pumps are running is that if you're pumping from the low port and you're pumping to the house and then back to the high port, which is the way you're supposed to be, and you just added that loop, the, you're gonna have air in that loop. So the, the pump's gonna push water through and then it's gonna be trying to push air back against the water that's in the tank, which is gonna pressurize or compress the air and not let it out because it's pushing on water. Pumps don't push air very well and it will compress. So you do need to set up a bleed system, but you don't have to if your pumps are strong enough, it'll push it right out, okay? But there's other reasons for having a bleed system in there, okay? So here's your supply. You want a ball valve on your supply, your pump mounted here going towards the house. That is the lower port, okay? That simple. On the return side, and you must have a ball valve. I'll explain to you in a minute. On the return side, I recommend this setup. A ball valve on the higher port with a T and a boiler drain. Now, here's the concept. A lot of people ask me, hey, I hear my pump running, but I don't get any heat in the house. I said, well, test the pump. And they're like, how do you want me to test the pump? I hear it, it's running. Doesn't mean it's working, okay? So what you can do is if you simply, on the return side, close the ball valve and open the boiler drain, and if water comes out slowly, then we know the pump's not working because it's the gravity, water atmospheric pressure is gonna push the water down and around the loop and then come out here slowly. Now, if the pump is working, it's gonna come out like a garden hose at full flow. So you know the pump's working. Then you shut this, open this, and then you know it's not the pump that's the problem, okay? That's one reason for having the relief. Now, if you wanna drain this loop, you do the same thing. You close this side, you open the boiler drain, you let the air from the pump, the pump pushing the water, pushes out the air and comes out here until it's a clear stream of water. Shut you this, you've just bled your loop. Okay, this is what the guys in the indoor boiler systems do. And I recommend it for you guys as well because it's gonna help you solve a lot of problems or you know, trying to troubleshoot issues. And here are a couple bonus things. On the back of the boiler, if you have two pumps, why don't you mount a light switch system? So you pump one and pump two. So if you ever need to replace a pump, instead of turning off the furnace and turning off everything, you literally flip the switch, turn off the pump, replace the pump, you're back in business, turn on the pump, okay? Or if you want one zone on in, in case you don't want to heat the other zone for like a hot air system and you want to heat domestic hot water, you turn off one and you got the other. A pool is another one that uh, people will have different pumps hooked up for. That's a, a nice little fix and it's cheap. Light switches are cheap and the outside uh, boxes are 10 bucks. Okay, couple things. When the pumps sit in non-heating season on the back of the wood boiler, there's a lot of sediment and stuff that'll get into them. Okay, when you turn on the furnace when you're ready to start heating again, I get a lot of calls, hey, I got a short. What happens is the cartridge and the sediment lock up. The surge of the power trying to get that spinning will short out and trip your breakers, okay? Couple solutions, one, Take off the pumps, spray them down with W40 at the end of the season, and uh, put them away, and then remount them. Or drain the system, again with the um, 
the, the ball valve here and then disconnect below it and get the water out of it and again spray WD-40 in it or something to keep it lubricated so it doesn't sit there and get all that sediment built up to lock. But I also have made a video, which is an older video, but it's out there, is how to take these apart and how to unstick them and hopefully get them working again. And again, I hope this video was educational and helpful to you. And if you like the video, please subscribe. we got more coming. And we're going to keep you up to date on as much of these little tricks and tips that I can give you. And i uh, love to hear any comments below. Thank you and have a great day. Going into I'm some of the phrase, start again from like now. Let me okay. <laughs> yes, I <can> <laughs> I'm, I'm passing on the curse. Uh, I just I, I like being able to see your arms and stuff. Like that, so. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> A 51-year-old, somewhat of a gun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay.